Hello all, Shoestring here. It's been a couple of days since Hurricane Helene has come through and knocked out power all over the southeast. I've got a lot of people calling saying, I can't plug my, my solar generator in. How do I charge this up with solar? So I thought I'd do a real quick video, show you several different devices and how uncomplicated it is to do this. Right now I've got this solar generator out here. As you can see it's connected to a solar panel. It has an Anderson connector. Let's unplug it for you. An Anderson connector that goes to the DC input and that is as simple as plugging it into the wall if you had power. All you have to do is get a solar panel right here, connected right here to the Anderson connector that goes right into the solar generator. Push the little button and it is practically charged up and it's only been out here a couple hours and it was drained pretty good. So we're going to go up on the stage where the sun isn't quite so bright and I will show you some of the easiest ways to connect your power pack or your power station, whatever else you may have, and show you just how easy it is to bring it out in the sun and charge your devices up. All right, see you there. All right, folks, now that we're back here on the stage, I'm going to show you two different types of power stations or battery banks, whatever you want to call them. This one here is an engine star. It's 300 watts. It's a small one. And when you do these type of power stations or the other one, which is a 9600 easy longer battery bank, there's a couple things you need to look for in your manuals if you don't already know. You need to come down where it says charge from solar panel and either gets the volts or what I like is the watts. So for this engine star, it says 50 to 100 watts recommended. So we're going to be using a 100-watt solar panel, just like we were out when we did that main solar generator a little while ago out in the grass. And we're going to be using that for both. But you need to know this information so you don't put too much of a charge on this. Now, most of these, like this one, has volt protection. But you have to remember that simply is going to protect the device. It's not going to help you charge. In fact, it will probably shut the charge down. Okay? And the next thing you need to know is what type of plug are you going to use? Here, the input's right here. This is where you plug it into the wall. It's also where you plug your solar in. Same thing, stick to the manual, and it will show you the millimeters right here. 5.5 millimeter DC, which fits in here. This here, of course, will also have the same thing. And it will walk you through the same steps. And it will tell you what the voltage is. This one is 50 to 100. And uh, another place that says 80 to 100. Doesn't really matter. We're going to make sure we don't go over 100 on this one either. It also uses the 5 millimeter. Let me show you how that works real quick. So you can see how easy it is. I have a... 5 millimeter connected to the 100 watt solar panel you saw earlier and we'll show it to you again in a moment. We're going to take our easy longer. We're going to find where it says DC input, which is what we're doing. We're going to open it up. And we're going to plug it in right there. And as you can see, it has already started charging. Now, I keep these pretty close to all the way charged, but you can see there, it has started to charge up. How long will it take, you ask? Well, it depends how far down these are drained and just how large your solar panel is. So I can't tell you exact numbers, but we've got a lot of messages from people asking, since we've had this hurricane, so many people out of power, my power stations are running out. What do I do? You take your solar panel, you put it out in the sun, and you hook it up just like that during the day. Rotate them if you have more than one, and that's how this works. 
Okay? V so easy, even shoestring can do it. Now, if you don't have these connectors, you may have to order them through Amazon, which is still running. So, now I like to have, let's go ahead and unplug this. I don't need it at the moment. I have SEA connections. So, if I wanted to order this from Amazon, I would say SAE to 5.5 millimeter, and it will pull these up. Yours might be 7. Yours might be 8. It might be different. Might be 5.5. Simple to get. They'll have it to you in a day or two, and you can start charging your devices up. Okay, so that's how you charge up that power pack. It's the same thing with the engine star, right? Now, the engine star says you should turn it on first. So you put on the power, plug it in, and it will start charging. The exact same way the exact same system. And that's as easy as it gets to charge things, these things up during power outages. All right, let's toss those to the side a moment. They are quite different, by the way, than charging a battery. When you charge an actual battery, this is a lithium battery, you need a charge controller like this one. Connected from the solar panel to the battery so it doesn't overcharge. The other ones I showed you don't need to do that because they have charge controllers made into them. Regular batteries here don't. So to do these, as you probably know, but let's go ahead and do it real quick since we have them here, is you connect the charge controller to the battery and then the charge controller comes on. Then we're going to take that and we're going to connect it to our solar panel just like we did with the 5.5 when we connected it to our engine star. And as you can see, it is now started up. It'll take a moment for it to start to reading the voltage off the solar panel, but it is. And this is now charging this battery which, like I said, is a great deal different than charging the power stations and the power banks we just did. So if you have questions, put it down in the comments. If you like these type of videos, please share, like, and follow. And shoestring out.